11th episode of Cloud Focus Weekly for the last day of September 2010. The episode is titled Forced to Dream. Cloud Focus Weekly is sponsored by Arcus, Cloud Computing Experts, and I'm your host, Jason Allen. Joining me today, and for the last 11 times, Justin Elstein. How are you doing? Doing great. Thank you for asking. <laughs> you always ask me how I'm doing. Well, I think that's the common thing to do. Well, in it's a, a little rainy in in New York City, go. and yeah, there you go. It's, it brings the spirits down a little you bit. You got a haircut. I did. Nice. Thanks for noticing. Yeah. Well, just a trim. It's been a, been about forty five minutes in the office now. I just noticed. So that's okay. Well, it's been about you know four to five months since I got a haircut. So <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's that's some oversharing on the podcast. Um, all right, so we got a good agenda today. We have a couple new blog posts. Um, some from ours, some from others. But uh, I have a blog post about Chatter and Dreamforce. We're going to talk about. Um, we have a press release. Uh, just we'll kind of go over what what it is and why it makes why it make a difference to some people. Um, uh, we're gonna talk about uh, Salesforce buying a another platform yep. um, and how that affects things and when we might see it uh, actually take place. Talk about um, talk a little bit about cloud computing and for small businesses. It's just something that I saw kind of people blogging about, and I thought we'll we'll just throw in our three cents. And then uh, Aperio. Uh, a big cloud computing vendor um, has built a new new product. Actually, built on a couple new products, but one's called uh, Salesworks, and we'll talk about how that is. There's a great demo of it online, and and what that means for sort of connecting the clouds. Um, so let's get started with me. You. <laughs> so I post the most important person in the room. Yes, that's true. Uh, there's only two of us, so that's not really that impressive. Oh. Um, so I posted a new blog post this morning uh, called "Chatter Changes Conference Collaboration." I was trying to see how many four C's. Yeah, I was. You couldn't go for like six or seven. Break the record. Uh, I could have thought I, there was one other I could have thrown in there, but I didn't. Basically, you know, it's. It, it's this was my cloud focus app pick of the week last. Week. It was, and I said I'm going to blog about it, so don't. You know, I'm ahead go, of the game. Let's not go too deep into it. But basically, uh, the conference that Salesforce does once a year called Dreamforce. Um, as an attendee, they used they've always had some sort of login portal, but this year they basically built it into their Salesforce portal and then added in um, Chatter, which is their new uh, collaboration social networking product. And it occurred to me as I started to use it that it really had some interesting. You know, changing the way conferences are traditionally, and I've gone to many, many conferences. I don't want to read my blog post, but I'll try to repeat it. I've gone to m- many conferences the last 16 years or so. And one of the things that, you know, it's kind of like you book it, you go, and then while you're there, you're very involved in the conference, right? Obviously, you know, there and people and places and things, and um, and it's, it's almost overwhelming. And then you leave, and then it's over. And there's sort of no continuity. And so what I love about adding Chatter to the Dreamforce portal is that there's a pregame for this, right? Here we are in, uh, well, we're almost in October. The, the uh, Dreamforce isn't until the beginning of December. And we're all in the portal, chatting with people, following people, looking at sessions, uh, starting and, and joining groups. Um, we started one about football fanatics, because we're all football people at Arcus here. Um, and, you know, I, I'm finding it really interesting, because I'm already being able to see and talk to people who I will want to talk to and maybe get some of the pre pre-conversation out. So I think, you know, business cards might be they're not going to be a thing in the past because everybody loves business cards, but the idea that, hey, listen, you don't have to have my information because my information's in chatter. And you might have already had it before before we even went to the conference. You already know my company, know me, my phone number. You might have already talked and then maybe the conference is a way to connect like deeper. Um, I also can see people using some of the new apps that are coming out, the chatter app and the iPad app. Like Oh, let me get to let me find Justin at the conference. I don't have his phone. I don't have his information. Why would I? Because I just you know heard. Oh, I go into Chatter. I can look him up. I can see him. I can post on his wall. Where are you? Can we meet today? Right. I think there could be a whole new kind of collaboration. I mean, what do you think? You've been using the portal. What do you think about it? I do love the portal. It yeah. was my pick of the week last week. That's true. Uh, you mentioned so, it. So I, I I do love the portal, and I do love the aspect of being able to. Go into a session and say, "Hey, I I spoke at this session last year. Hope yep. this year it's great." And yep. seeing other people post on top of that, people that I know, uh, you know, from past lives, reconnecting with them and and them asking me, "Hey, what sessions do you think would be interesting for me to go to?" And me being able to have that conversation uh, on the portal as opposed to that probably being a conversation that we don't have. Uh, 
particularly two months prior to the to the event itself, we definitely don't have that conversation. So so it, it brings a level of um, a new level of fun to an already exciting and fun event that you get to sort of participate in well before the event starts uh, and, and connect to people. And like you said, I think it'll be interesting to see how people, if, if I'm at a session about, um, you know, how to use content for marketing purposes and I'm a marketer and I see that there's an executive from uh, Big Corp XYZ up there talking about how they use content and I'm an executive at Big Corp uh, ABC and I want to talk to them I can potentially you know I have to run out of there and go to my next session but I hop on my mobile device and you know shoot a message at them hey I'd love to talk to you about what you just spoke about and who doesn't want to go talk to somebody about you know their big speech at Dreamforce uh, you'd be happy to so you can you know meet up in that way if people are going to share their email addresses and phone numbers which they may as well they're at a conference you can always uh, you know, then have their information moving forward. Although that's a little, you know, a little creepy, but not so well, much. You're uh, well, no worse than a, no worse, no than, worse than, than a business, business card, card. But a business card's your choice. You get to sort of your choice to put it in the portal. That's true. It is your choice, so you don't have to put your phone number, or email address on there. Uh, it, it's cool. I, I I do quite enjoy it, and I I look forward to seeing how it evolves with the next uh, with the winter release. Uh, and all the you know all the new features that are coming and how they integrate those features into the portal. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like Chatter Central and hashtags and because uh, because it is sort of a forward looking group of people that go to the conference and they're going to use these new features that they put out, uh, particularly things like hashtags. So we're football people. We're going to hashtag the word Jets every time we right. you know we go into there and go into our football group and. Uh, it's kind of cool. Yeah, it, it's a, it's really it's really nice. I've seen to add a few things like I want to see the the people who are who are speaking in the sessions. I want to see them attached to the sessions so I can then follow them. Well, you I can't think, even you can't even like register for a session yet. Right. I assume that's coming. I, I would assume it's coming too. But you um, can follow a session, so people can, could post on the session, or if the session changes, you would see it if you're following it. But yeah, I would like to see. The people who are speaking at the session, so that you could either follow them or ask them a couple questions before the session. Right, or when you're at the session, I can go to the session. Right, I can put it on my calendar. When I'm at the session, I can go to it and and I can watch them, look at their profiles, see their company. I can do that all while I'm kind of listening to yeah. them. It kind of lets me and then follow them, so I can say, "Hey, I just saw you speak. What you were talking about? Let's let's meet up later." I think that's a great the thing. One, so. The one thing I'll say, which in the past couple of years, because we've gone to Dreamforce for the last bunch of years, is that they tend to not have good connectivity at the conference, meaning your cell phone generally doesn't work, <laughs> uh, and there's no Wi-Fi for you. Um, there's Wi-Fi. It's just there's so Wi-Fi. Loaded. It just gets completely creamed. Right. So I'm hoping that this year with this app, they want it to be more collaborative, so they will provide... Wi-Fi spots and, and well, places they have for you them. To they're connect. just not good. So it's whether it doesn't. It never works. For well, me. the point is they've got to add. They've got to make them better. They, well, they've the, always had Wi-Fi. If they're going to, and I believe they will promote the use of this app during the conference, then they have to beef up the infrastructure around the center to allow for people to actually use it. It's true. Except for last time, the cloud, the cloud expo, whatever it was in New York. Um, was all about mobile, cloud, mobile devices, and all that, and they didn't even provide free Wi-Fi. So it, it's possible they'll mess up. Hopefully you're listening. Listen up, Salesforce. We're telling you something. So we had a pop. I'm actually going to go into the portal and tell Tom Wong that. Excellent. Good choice. Uh, so we had, a, we had a press release yesterday. Um, we did. Yep, about us and Job Science, who is a, a cloud, wow, um, cloud recruiting Application developer? Yeah, you could say that. I'm gonna, <laughs> that's what I'm going to say. Uh, or why don't you, how about why don't the, you read the the press conference and say what they what they call themselves? The leading provider of human capital management solutions on the Salesforce.com platform. That's better. Yeah. Take two. Um, and so we've become a partner of theirs, a premier implementation partner, if you will. Um, so if you're in the New York area and you want to get Job Science uh, installed and up and running, uh, you might be talking to us about it. 
um, as well as them to, you know, sort of as the purchasing. Uh, I think actually what I'd like to do, because this this area might have an interesting topic, but I think we should, there's another one I'm going to pre-put out there for another podcast, talk about um, education in, and maybe next week, um, but talk about education in the cloud and how things are changing. Um, and how they could change. So just throwing it out there. Anyway, read the pod, uh, search for Arcus in the news and there's job science and it's a really great relationship. We're very happy. Um, it's our first major sort of partnership other than Salesforce, uh, which was sort of a, a gimme. Um, and we're happy with them and can't wait to do some good things. It's a, it's a, great, it's a great platform, obviously. It's, it's built on Salesforce platform. It's a very good product. It has a lot of high-end features um, that you just, y- y- if you were gonna build out, you would take years to build out. Um, it's and great for recruiting. Yeah, for for people who are you know the the folks at companies who are the hiring people who manage hiring in the HR department. Great job board, good set of questions and answers and processes to put people through as they go through the the hiring process. You know, first first call interview, um, you know, meeting in person, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, really nice workflows and pre built searches built in. Look and feel is familiar with Salesforce, uh, and it, and it's a pretty well done product. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, so something else we have uh, some news. Salesforce buys the cloud based chat messaging platform for support called Activa. Activa Live. Yeah. Um, you broke the. We didn't break the story, but you put I didn't it in our agenda. Story. I put it in our agenda. So though. why don't you we'll talk about it then? Sure. So Activa Live is essentially a cloud-based uh, customer support environment that uses chat. So it's a lot like uh, some of the other platforms that are out there, like Live Person. And if you've ever been on a website and someone says, "Hey, would you like to chat?" and you say, "Yeah." That's sort of what this is. Right. Live but, person was what yeah, live right person or, or bold chat uh, are some of the other ones. Uh, but this one already was pre-integrated with Salesforce, so you could be on a chat with a uh, a rep, and they could pull up your Salesforce information from within the Active Alive console uh, if you exist. They could also send the notes of the chat that you're having into a case so it's sort of chat to case right yep. or, or chat to activity yep you can log it as an activity record all within this activa live console built with uh, I believe a, a flex front end uh, so it's it's a really interesting uh, sort of shift of being able to how I see it uh, not being integrated into Salesforce completely into the package for at least a year, I would imagine. But I could definitely see this being on the main stage at Dreamforce as being a, a new piece of the service cloud too, where hey, not only do you have Twitter as a channel and, and Facebook as a channel and the web as a channel and your phone as a channel, but now you have this chat as a channel for all types of different support methods. Uh, Salesforce just trying to cover all bases, uh, being able to sort of when you're in a chat, be able to just grab a, a, a knowledge article or a, a solution and pre-pop, boom, right into the chat based on something that someone says. Uh, so some pretty cool features, some great integration already with the product, uh, but I imagine that it will be even more um, baked in as part of the feature set of Salesforce moving forward as they sort of delineate their product lines from sales cloud service cloud and collaboration cloud and custom cloud these four different lines this will definitely fit in the in the service cloud uh as they sort of start selling them separately yeah uh i it it seems like a good product i have quick time to look at it um salesforce seems to do this like once or twice a year to buy something Mm -hmm. it also then seems to take one to two years really to get all the features that were in the product and build them into the cloud um, you know, ideas, well, I uh, think content. Jigsaw. Uh, Jigsaw, Jigsaw is going to be, I, I mean, I'll, I'll go out on a limb and we'll do a Dreamforce podcast right before Dreamforce and we'll probably do one maybe at Dreamforce, but I, I imagine Jigsaw is going to be a big thing at at the, at the Dreamforce. I've already seen the, the slide that has the chiclets and the, the four things across the top with the product lines. It now has five. 
Just and Jigsaw is like the data cloud or Jigsaw something Chicklet. like that. That would have been a better title. Than Jigsaw that. Chicklet. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it, it that and this Activa Live I can see being demoed on the stage uh, with Jigsaw being part of the sales cloud and uh, Activa being part of the service cloud. Yep, absolutely. Um, so, well, interesting to see how they integrate it. Yeah, again, more to come probably on it. Um, so just a little discussion about and about cloud computing for small businesses because it's something that we've, we're have we dealing with a couple of our clients are small businesses, startups, um, and so it's kind of been sitting in my mind. Maybe it's a blog post um, that, I, that I should write. Um, but what I'm, you know, just some, some advantages. If you're a small business, you say, why is cloud computing important to me? And one of the things that we like to talk to our customers about is just that the ability to use the same tool set, the same architecture, the same um, you know features that enterprise class companies can use, uh, it's massive. And you, you literally, for the small investment of licensing, monthly licensing from Salesforce or things like Google Apps or things, um, or you know Jungle Disk or Rackspace or all the f- products that we use, even even something like WebEx. I mean, I know that WebEx is, you know, sort of pioneers in the software as a service. Certainly, <laughs> and for and I was we are a big user of WebEx, and I was looking at, I was looking at our WebEx today, you know, scheduling meetings. I was like, wow, we really use a, this a lot, and for you know allowing us to do stuff that that only f- so many years ago as an enterprise company you would have a big installation to do this stuff. So I. I you know, it's I don't know if it's really a discussion point, but I, I think there's there's something more to it. Um, just saying that for small companies, you can get up and running and use. You know, you can get your your website hosted. You can get your CRM system up and running. You can get your conferencing, your conference call, your PBX system, your data, your your backend uh, local area network, all of it for. I won't say next to nothing, but almost next to nothing in terms of what you used to have to put in. You used to have to go and put in. 50, well, you don't. 60, you don't own dollars. anything, right? Which is the th- you don't own something that deprecates uh, in value or depreciates in value, or it takes a lot of capital cost to get in on. Right? right. That's the problem with small businesses is, is you don't have five hundred million dollars or even you know hundreds of millions of dollars or whatever to go buy the server farm. The thing you know, the and sometimes the you don't have the expertise either right. to set up a disaster recovery or a mirror site that has to be you know across a river somewhere mm-hmm. or you know not on site. You have your server here, but where's where's your disaster recovery and is it in sync and this and that? Do you have a hot swap? All those types of things that cloud computing sort of abstracts from from you having to think about. You just sort of know that you're getting it and well you have to know that you're getting it because yeah. those are some of the questions that you want to ask uh, am I getting this <laughs> with my license and and with the service that I'm actually gonna subscribe to but that's the thing it's a subscription so as you if you are a small business sometimes in economies like we're going through right now you fluctuate you have four people you have 20 people you have 30 people you have 15 people well cloud computing allows you to uh, stale up and down back and forth without having to be too tight on that forecasting and say oh we have a six-year plan or a five-year plan and we're gonna grow from six people to 20 people to 50 people to 250 people and with that you need to plan for your infrastructure and your architecture and your technology well with cloud computing you just sort of pay for more licenses as opposed to you know oh we have to scale up to this many people let's buy new boxes let's set them up and then all of a sudden recession hits and you're down you know 50 percent and now you have this huge box that's being utilized at five percent that's not a very good investment you've you've just made a a mistake as a business uh one of the one of the telling things and every time i go to a salesforce conference and mark benioff speaks one of the first things that he always does is he asks the crowd a question he says who here works for a company of 100 or less people and like 30% of the crowd raises their hand. And then who here works for a company of, you know, between 100 and 1,000 people and 30% of the crowd raises their hand. And then who here works for a company of larger than 1,000 and, you know, the rest of the crowd raises their hand. And it's always very interesting to see, to your original point, this same service being used by all these different segments of the market. And that's sort of what cloud computing brings to the table. 
Yeah, and I think there's there's something more to it. Maybe we'll fine tune it and bring it into a better conversation. Maybe it's a blog post. Maybe it's a specific article. Or maybe it's a specific podcast just on that. And something we might play with, which is taking a podcast and really hitting one area and really talking deep into it. Um, but for now, we're not going to do that. Okay. So last thing on the before before we get to our cloud focus app pick of the week, uh, let's talk about. Uh, Aperio's SalesWorks um, yep. or their CloudWorks which is their cloud connectivity product. It's the plumbing as they like to say. It is the plumbing. Uh, it's cloud plumbing. Cloud the, plumbing. The the video, the first video I watched was was rather odd. It, Very vague. Yeah, it had lots of clouds being connected by, by literally pipes. Um, this one is something that I think we've seen pieces of before because I think I've seen this connecting but why don't you tell us what SalesWorks is by Aperio and, yep. and how that's sort so of... So I've actually seen the early stages of this demonstration, uh, I think it's actually a uh, friend of the podcast, Ryan Nichols, who does this demo uh, in the video, and he's done the demo for me personally, uh, where you're sitting inside of Gmail, and you're getting an email from a customer, and the you know it has some information that he says, oh, I wanna get started on this project next week, where are we? And sort of the, the crux of the demo is, you're in email, you're in that context, and you have no other information, usually, to make that decision. And are you gonna take the time to go look in your other systems to see if you can answer that question correctly? If someone says, hey, I wanna start on a project next week, generally you're gonna be like, great, let's get started. Uh, but what the SalesWorks product does is it brings contextual information into Gmail as a gadget. Uh, so it brings in information from your Salesforce uh, that shows the, the contacts at that account or that particular contact, any open opportunities that you might have with them. It also brings in information from an ERP system so you can see if they have any you know, outstanding balances or bills that might be due. And, and in this particular demo, it's, oh, this customer owes us a lot of money um, and hasn't paid, why would we start a new project with them? We need to get paid first. And it's sort of like, would you go look for all that information before answering the question, yes, you know, in, in, in a previous iteration? So it sort of connects these disparate systems into your email, which is where you tend to do a lot of work. Yeah, and there's a similar product, not cloud-based, but a similar product that has been out for Outlook called Zobni. I think yeah, you're talking and about. I think that Salesforce, it's a plug -in. Salesforce is actually building upon right now, which is that they're going to release one that's Outlook based. That's very much the same. You you hit an email in Outlook, and again, it's a plug in, so not cloud based. And in and then it literally goes and looks up a bunch of information. We'll show you history, blah blah blah. Pull all that stuff from Salesforce directly. Zobni on the face of it is very cool. In practical terms, it is a dog. It really kills Outlook. Just in terms of speed. Oh, it's terrible because yeah. uh, I've tried it. Um, but in this case, everything's in the cloud. So we're talking about connecting your Gmail to your Salesforce to a product called Workday, which is sort of a you know HR ERP type of system. Um, and then it also works in your calendar, so you can flip over to your calendar. You can see Visual Force pages within Gmail. You can see Chatter within Gmail. You have your Google Start page, which has chatter widgets and uh, financial widgets and all these, all this data and application integration just sort of happening in the cloud. It, um, it's quite an interesting concept. Uh, it's something that, uh, you know, in, in the old world of enterprise architecture would probably cost hundreds of millions of dollars to get this uh, big data silo that can actually connect everything together. Uh, this is just sort of connecting the clouds. It is what they sort of say it is the plumbing. It's very early on. Haven't used it in any practicality, but the demos look very promising. It does, and it and it. I think, I think it's a wow factor thing. I'm not. I'm not sure whether we're ready for it almost, and that I love the idea of contextual stuff, but I don't know if I'm always want to hit on. I'm talking to a client, and every time I click on them, you know, some other information pops up that in some ways could be distracting. And I think this is the thing about start pages and home pages and dashboards that sort of were the wave basically 10 years, for the last 10 years, the, the, up until I think, you know, the last couple of years. Not the Google wave. 
No, not the Google Wave, sorry. But the 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 idea of a dashboard, you know, little bits of information that you need to see. And we used to argue uh, in our former lives that it really wasn't about having one big page with lots of information. It was, get me to my information faster. So, because what I really want is not little bits of information, I want full information fast. So I want to be able to search. So I'm going to be just sitting on this person, this client who sends this information to me, and I think this product helps do this and say, okay, there's a little bit, but I want to get to the bigger piece because really I can't make a decision based on this little widget. And I just like I can't log into my home system, desktop system, and, and see this little widget of this graph and go, oh, I'm going to make a decision on that. No, you generally have to go in deeper. So then it's a matter of, for me, and I think the shift has become not so much showing lots of little information, but showing, but being able to get contextually to bigger information quicker. My take on it, totally different thing. I think the product looks really interesting, great demo. Um, would love to know, you know, pricing, connectivity, what you need to have. Um, it also, for me, I don't live in Gmail. I live in Mail, but I don't live in Gmail because I like Mail and I find Gmail not as useful for me. Although, every time I go back to Gmail, I'm always impressed. I'm re-impressed, but then I go back to Mail and I'm like, oh yeah, this is still better. So, until it works in Mail, it's one of those things that I don't know if I'd be fully using. All right, so that will bring us to our Cloud Focus app pick of the week. Rolls right off the tongue. It does. I'm even doing the like... Uh, You're like an announcer voice. I am. Pick of the week. And uh, I'm going to ask you to go first. Of course you are. <laughs> of course I am. <laughs> I think I've gone first once. So. I think you have. So I'm going to uh, talk about a product called Boomi Atmosphere Cloud Integration. Uh, this is a product that lives in the cloud uh, by Boomi. It integrates data between uh, one system and another. It is a sort of a drag and drop interface. It's sort of easy to, once you get it, it's pretty simple to figure out, but it does some really hefty things, some, some very uh, things that are very difficult to do, uh, like integrate two systems data together. So if a data point in one system changes, have that flow down into another system and perhaps transform that data in the middle. ETL, <laughs> uh, extract, transfer, and load from one system to the next, doing it all in the cloud, which is really cool. No footprint, no little beacon to install anywhere. Don't have to have a machine running something to pick up the process. You can schedule it, it can be in real time. Uh, it can connect like 40 some odd uh, pre-built connectors, uh, Salesforce being one of them. Um, a lot of other cloud products and on-premise products can be integrated by using uh, Boomi. And since you were going to ask, pricing, uh, there, there are three different levels. There's the base product, which is uh, $550 per month, which gets you two connections uh, and standard support with unlimited users and unlimited processes, but essentially connecting two things. Mm -hmm. There's the professional edition, which has three connections. Uh, as well as all the things I mentioned. And then there's the Enterprise Edition, which is $5,500, which essentially allows you to do enterprise level type integrations, seven different connections, uh, essentially unlimited type and, of stuff. And that's per month. Per month, not yeah. per user. So a lot of these per month. Per user per month. Not per user. Month. Base is $550, professionals $1,100. Enterprise fifty five hundred. Nice. I know you were showing me. We just did a uh, use Boomi for a client of ours, and uh, you were showing it to me. It looked really good. It looked like a great product. And again, I think the key, what you were pointing out, is the key indicator and maybe differentiator between it and other products, which we won't name because that will be we might use them in the future. Um, is that uh, it doesn't? Yeah, you don't. It's all cloud. So you do not need to have any kind of software. We're a big Mac shop, so a lot of times we get left out of the party because we can't download something. Um, so you're saying it's all in the cloud, which is really great. So uh, Boomi, Boomi Atmosphere by Boomi. Um, mine's going to be something totally different. It's going to be a downloadable app. It's going to be for Mac only. <laughs> it needs a footprint. Boom. And it's going to be free. <laughs> okay. So that all the things that yours wasn't. Free. Uh, Free's um, good. Uh, I have picked something by this person before, and if, I, if it were up to me, I would almost pick one of his things every week. I PS four or five pieces of product, so I probably could. Um, it's made by a developer called Simon Fell. We actually named Simon Fell? Named. You said called. Called. Well, he might be called other things. But okay. he's named Simon Fell. 
and uh, the company is called Pocket Soap. Um, he's a full-time employee of Salesforce at this point. He was actually picked up because he did a lot of app de Mac OS X app development work for Salesforce. He's one of the main people sort of doing some of the back-end architecture, which we use in a lot of our products, um, or a lot of our projects. Anyway, this one's called Sockle Explorer. Um, Sockle, for all of these out there, is Salesforce's uh, ability, their kind of language for doing data queries. Um, so this app allows you to, again, downloadable, free, um, on the Mac OS platform only. You download it and then you connect up with username and password and then it gives you all the objects on one side and all the fields and then you can click on those and both sort of run Sockle queries to say give me from X take X, from all accounts give me opportunities, um, from all contacts give me first name, last name, and email address, that kind of thing. You can then edit, which is kind of cool. Um, so you can get sort of data out very quickly. The nice thing, and my favorite piece of it, is you can go flip to another tab and show schema. And then it all of a sudden shows you this diagram of the data and how it's connected. This object's connected to this object's connected to this object. It doesn't go as deep as I want it to go, and it doesn't sort of, it doesn't do a, a database diagram, which would be nice, you know, master detail relationship type stuff. Um, maybe I can convince him to. Uh, do that. But anyway, great product. A nice printable um, view would be cool. It does do a printable view. It's just huge. Yeah, it's, you know, it's too big. Well, It'd be nice if you clicked the button and it was like, ah, here you go. It gives you too much information. You should <laughs> yeah. be able to like knock out knock out pieces. Like say, I don't want to see this, I don't want to see this because it's not important. Anyway, Sockle Explorer by Pocket Soap and a developer called Simon Fell. Um, I'll definitely tweet him on this because he is he's a, really, he's a really nice guy on Twitter and again, works for Salesforce. Um, a nice story, like was a developer and then picked up by Salesforce because he was doing so much great work. Also, There's I, a bunch of those. Yeah, it's a bunch. I recently picked MailDrop was their mail integration piece. I meant there's a bunch of developers that have been working on oh. Salesforce stuff that have then gone on to work at Salesforce. Speaking of going on to work at Salesforce, uh, you can follow us, which has nothing to do has with us. has nothing to do with that. That's why it's fun. It's a good segue. It's a gooey. Um, all right, so if you want to find out about our podcast, you want to read our blog, it's at blog.arcathink.com. Um, you want to follow us on Twitter, which is a great place to see what we're doing. Um, you can follow the company at arcusinc.com. That's A-R-K-U-S-I-N-C, not .com. It's twitter.com slash arcusinc. Justin's at twitter.com slash justedelstein. Um, these are all in the notes, the podcast notes. And I'm at uh, twitter.com slash Jason M. Atwood. Uh, another place to find all this and more if you're one of those social people um, with the new movie coming out soon. But Facebook, facebook.com slash Inc. We're also on LinkedIn if you want to follow the company there. So many ways. But the best way to follow the podcast, if you really want to make sure you don't miss a beat or miss an episode, again, we do it different times during the week because of our scheduling uh, with our clients, uh, is go to iTunes. Go to iTunes, type in Cloud Focus Weekly. Cloud Focus is one word and hit subscribe, then you just get it. It comes down instantly. Um, I think that's really the best. And while you're there, hey, leave us a nice review. We really like it. Um, so thank you for joining us for this week. Uh, and until next week, well, enjoy those cloudy days.